and it's going to be interesting to see how they approach Rex for the next episode. But I think that should segue us right into our last segment, which, as usual, is our speculation towards episode 15. Now, we don't know the title of this next week's episode yet, but episode 15 should be a follow-up to this one, and it should have something to do with trying to rescue Hunter, whether they take the Mandalorian approach and say... We need to gather a force because that you know, we we can yeah. barely get into Project War Mantle's facility on Daro by ourselves, and to get Hunter back. And now that they know Hunter's there and Crosshair's there, and they've got all these people guarding him, we need to gather a, a substantial force to be able to fight back and get him. And that's where why they go get Rex. And maybe I could see next episode being we have to go get Rex but Rex has another mission we, he needs us to help on first. And so they help him with whatever he's doing, and then it ends with, I'll help you guys get Hunter back, and let's go get him. And on the as a B-plot of the story, it could be some more stuff between Hunter and Crosshair. Hunter's chips removed. What do they do when they you know see a clone with the chip removed? Obviously, they can't recondition him. So how are they going to, what are they going to do with Hunter? Because he's pretty much useless, right? Like they don't, they don't need to torture him for information because he doesn't know anything about anything. You know, he's, he's doesn't have any information. He's not really a threat to the empire. He, he, there, there's no reason he, the empire needs him. Like they, they should just kill him, but their crosshair has the personal vendetta with him and the bat rest of the bad batch. So he's going to want to go after the squad Obviously, they're not going to just kill Hunter in a cell without it being emotionally impactful for other characters in the show. So I think we might get some more philosophical debate type stuff between brain uh, inhibitor chipped crosshair and free Hunter. I think we'll get a little bit more about Rampart's larger vision of the military for the galaxy and where they're taking those clones. I think we'll also get a little bit more about maybe Lama Su standing trial or something. Maybe he has an execution coming up. Maybe it's more focused on Nala Se and what she's doing with the Empire and how she's managed to survive. And and we also seem to... I, I think we need a way to at least get Finnick back in the show. I doubt we're going to finish this season without Finnick. I think Cad Bane... They've kind of set it up to be where, where Fennec goes, Cad Bane goes, but without Lama Su, who seemingly hired Cad Bane, does Cad Bane show back up? I'm not sure, but I think Fennec shows up at some point and we kind of need a way for her to get back in the show. And that could be as easy as Nala say, just opening up a communicator in private and being like, hey, the, the, everything's going crazy in, on Camino, and I need you to get Omega and take her to this secret facility and I'll try to meet you there as soon as I can. Or it could be bring Omega to us with the Empire. And maybe we see a little bit of Phoenix like reluctance because she's been kind of an antihero in the show where she's wanting to get her job done, but she also seems to kind of care about Omega and not want to kill her or or do any harm to her like Cad Bane or Lama Su seem to. So there's that angle. And then obviously the notable lack of hauser in episode 13 and 14 and anything to do with clone inhibitor chips failing or anything to do with what why the i mean we we can assume that that's accelerated the evacuation of the clones from camino and that's accelerated their move to stormtroopers and caused this whole crazy thing to happen and, and hauser might just be used as that we might never see him again but there's a notable lack of what's happening to him and what's happening to the clones and their inhibitor chips and what's the, what's going on with all that stuff. So there's, <laughs> well, there's so much, there's so much to do in two episodes. And I think, and all of those are going to be B plots, right? Cause the A plot is going to be Hunter's captured and we got to get him back and then Hunter and crosshair stuff. And so I think the season's obviously shaping up to end with a big crosshair versus bad batch kind of finale and, and, I think that's a solid way to end this first season because it has been a bit more character focused than universe focused. We've only had a couple episodes that really have ditched the bad batch or made them secondary, but it is going to be interesting to set up all these big universe questions and whether they 
hint towards the future of them, try to wrap them up a little bit, just ignore them and say, let's wrap up the Bad Batch plot. And then next season will be a larger universe scale, kind of like Rebels was. Rebels was a much more insulated show with the Ghost crew. It was about their small rebellions and and then the personal stuff with Kanan and Ezra versus the Inquisitors trying to kill Jedi. It's not really them wanting to take on the Empire. It's them trying to survive and not get killed by an Inquisitor. So, and then from season two, it expands to Rex and Gregor and Wolf and Ahsoka. And I think it was Wedge in season two or three. And then Mon Mothma and, uh, and the Rebellion, basically. So it'll be interesting to see if they take that approach with Bad Batch as well and say we've set all these things up that are going to be big for the next two, three seasons. And yes, for those people who uh, we did get comments last week that people have said, well, they haven't confirmed season two. Well, they have not. No, you're correct. But at this point, if you look at the story that's here, unless they decide let's do all of that in a book or a comic series or something or a completely different show, I think it's pretty much all but announced that we're getting season two and it very well could take the Loki approach for those of you spoiler for Loki. It's getting a season two, if you haven't heard. Um, so they could take that approach and reveal at the end of the season, who knows, but there's so much story here and, and obviously the focus will be on Hunter and Omega and Rex and, and the bad batch versus crosshair. And, and I think, we might have to sideline some of these subplots, unfortunately, to wrap up that angle. And that's not not necessarily a bad thing because that is the heart and soul of the show. But there's also a lot of other exciting stuff that we do want answers to. And we do want those connections that I don't think we're all, not everyone's going to be satisfied by the end of the season finale. I'll, I think I'll say that pretty confidently. But do you have any ex, uh, predictions or expectations for next week specifically and and where we might, how we might finish this show with a two, two episode arc that kind of really tries to tie up a lot of these loose ends. A lot of loose ends. Yeah. A lot, a lot of loose ends. I don't think we'll get to all of them. Um, I really did want to see Hauser again, but I could really see him kind of just be done. I'd hope for like maybe a little cameo where we see him like, you know, standing trial for his misdeeds. Um, I'd like to see more of these regular clones that are, you know, protesting or getting pissed off about, you know, the status of their life just being thrown out like nothing. Um, I'd like to see a lot of stuff with clones that are good, you know, for the Imperials, like have a lot of problems with these new TK soldiers. I'd like to see a lot of like replacements happening where like maybe we just start off the next episode on a battle, right? And then after it's done, you know, like they've captured something, an Imperial craft lands down and new TK troopers come out and these clones are forced to board in. And that's like the end of their time. I'd, I'd like to see things like that. And I think that could be an interesting way of cold opening um, the rest of this arc. Because I think right now we're at the... We're at one of the more key moments of like, this is the end of clone troopers being such a prominent part of the galaxy. I mean, you know, the way people like Luke and stuff talk about it, right? It's a legendary war that happened. You're part of the clone war, but it's not like anyone of his age really saw or interacted with clones. I, I know clone wars didn't happen. It was just the random throwaway line in the new hope, but none of that's really referenced at all in the original trilogy. There's nothing in Rebels that really is about the clones other than the actual clones of Rex and Gregor and Wolf. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd i say Hauser showing up, Cameo at best. Um, the Kamino and stuff, as we mentioned, it's going to get interesting. And I see Fennec maybe coming back. Um I don't know if Cad Bane or Boba Fett will show up. I, I really wanted them to, but perhaps Boba Fett is hired for an Imperial job. Maybe he finds some some sort of glory in taking down his old family. Maybe he feels like where, whatever position in life that he's in, it's 
all traces back to the Kaminoans. Um, I mean, it, it, let's be honest. Do we know why Boba is just gone after Attack of the Clones? Why does he join these bounty hunters? It doesn't seem too far of a stretch to think that he'd be considered pretty valuable to these cloners because he is the alpha. He is, you know, technically viable next source for the clones. If the degradation that has been talked about throughout Clone Wars and especially in the Bad Batch is happening at an accelerated rate more than even the Kaminoans expected. So maybe his relationship and his past history with that little tiny gap between the Pack of the Clones and his appearance in um, uh, in the, his appearance in the Clone Wars, maybe there's some sort of explanation as to why he fully committed to this bounty hunter lifestyle instead of just going back to Camino. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess now let's say, I guess we've seen the facilities in like episode nine and stuff like there are other things that Nala say could do, but I mean, I, I think the only role that she's going to play for the rest of the season is kind of like that context deliver. She's going to be like, all right, this is what I did. Let me explain it to the Bad Batch or whoever says she's talking to that she, this is the only way to guarantee the Kaminoans aren't eradicated because maybe the Imperials are seeing them more and more as a threat and you know, keep selling her information about the work that she's doing and she wants to do for the Empire is the only way to continue. But at the same time, Nalase is not exactly it's very straightforward. So she's willing to kill other Kaminoans to guarantee that, you know, Omega is alive and stuff. So now maybe she brings in Fennec, sort of anti-hero, like you said, to take charge. Maybe try to draw Omega out to... Maybe force the bad bats to help her out to prevent whatever is going on with Operation Warman. We don't really know what her side is quite yet. Lama Su is a lot more of a simpler character versus her. And again, like we mentioned, we still don't know about the complexity behind his reasons for wanting Omega dead, what he was going to do with just her template, right? It seems like he just wanted regular troopers, but that's not happening anymore. Um Besides that, I mean, yeah, Rex is going to be there. There's going to be things that happen with that. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping we don't see Sid in these next two episodes. Um I think this is the part where it's fair to say like let's do a clean break from the mercenary lifestyle. I think now that they've committed so much to rescuing Gregor and they've lost Hunter at least in this moment of time. They have to, you know, connect. This Bad Batch group has to connect with someone, something or someone of greater value who can put their skills to a better use. Um, yeah, I mean, when we look, look at Rex, there's been hints that, like, he's contacting other people. Seems like he's doing some other mission. Like, we see in this episode that he's on some sort of, he's being pursued or someone's about to trace a signal. So he just, quick in and out like that's he gives the message get Gregory's out we've seen in the episode when they're on Bracca that you know they're trying to you know he's contacting someone he's like I'll be there at the next rotation and maybe it's not Ahsoka it could be Ahsoka but like the Ahsoka novel makes it pretty clear that a year after she's kind of on her own she's not with Rex at this point um Maybe he's working with some other clones. Maybe he's working with some senators. We don't, I don't really know what to make of Rex's situation other than that it's probably been the most puzzling thing. How he's been used has been fun, but the threads that are been put out there, they don't seem as obvious as maybe they think they are. Um, I, I, it, it would shock me to think that, you know, as notable as Rex is amongst all these clones that know him for some reason i mean it makes sense he is he was part of the five of first he is one of the greatest clones of all time but i mean maybe he's working for someone higher up maybe there are things that we haven't really understood about the republic military structure that are being played with now in this now imperial era i don't know i, I think that's very 
very much the most confusing thing I want to speculate on there. But I don't think – I think how we're going to deal with Rex is going to be unexpected. I don't think this is a situation where, like, in Rebels, once Fulcrum is really, like, a big part of season one, people within that first week were just, like, they pitched the tone down or pitched it up and they found out it was Ahsoka. Like, it was so obvious from that. The way that they're using Rex is – so much less obvious that I don't really know what he's doing. I don't know if he's working on his own thing or if it's some other person he's working under, if he's working with Ahsoka. Who knows, right? Um, and I guess the only other thing really left to speculate is Crosshair and Hunter. Crosshair comes alone. He doesn't really seem to be with his elite troopers. He says, you know, I wanted the whole batch, but you, you'll suffice. I, I think this is going to tie into like my previous speculation of this is going to be more like a psychological battle where a hunter is going to try to appeal to Crosshair and his humanity, tell him about the brain chips, this and that. Maybe Crosshair is like, yeah, I know about the brain chip. I don't really care. It doesn't have an effect on me. Once you shot me up on Braca with that engine, it completely fried it. I'm just doing this because I want to do this now. Um, maybe Hunter appeals to like how... He, Crosshair's really a pawn between War Mantle and Rampart, and the Kaminoans have been using him. And he's a clone, so he's going to always be faced after some degree. Um, I guess maybe Crosshair will taunt him about Omega and how like it's inevitable. I, I think it's going to be more of like going back to like a Wanda Vision, like how Vision fights Vision, like White Vision fights um, this temporal Vision, right? And it's going to be. It's going to be more of like a discussion of sorts. I don't think anything crazy is going to happen to break out maybe in this episode that we see anything mm-hmm. that we will see of like a future breakout. I feel like it's going to happen with the B plot, with the Bad Batch, with Gregor, maybe Rex appearing, but Hunter and Crosshair, I think it's going to really be more of a battle of the wills. Who's going to sway who? What are we going to understand about the you know, the state of the clones at this point in the galaxy, how each of them feels about their place in the galaxy. I think it's going to be more of just personal, like, vendettas against each other because we started off with the Bad Batch of the show, just of them bickering and not being on their same side. Now this is the first time since their separation that, you know, it's about dealing with the consequences of what's happened throughout these 14 episodes yeah i really really want that i really want the conversations between hunter and and crosshair because now crosshair is the most obviously loyal to the empire but hunter is the leader of the squad he was his squad leader before he was he has the most personal connections i think to every other member of the batch and he's also the one that's really taken it upon himself to lead this group once they've left the empire and, and be the one that makes the decisions for their survival and how much they get paid and what they do and where they go and who they help. And so I, I really want to see that. And I hope we get that. I really do. I think it would be nice to get that. It, I would love it if next episode is just that. And also the bad batch trying to get, help Rex with something so that they can accomplish their little mission there. And then they all team up to go get Hunter back in episode 16. I would think that would be a really satisfying setup episode toward, as we get towards the finale. Cause I do think next week is, is going to be more of a a setup for the eventual finale. And we don't know, we don't know the names of the next two episodes. And we also don't know the length of the last two episodes have been like a minute longer than the the previous episodes. They've been slightly longer. Maybe the finale, we can get like a 30 minute or 45 minute episode. I haven't heard anything about that, but I, there's just so much to wrap up that that would be really nice if they could do that. But yeah, I think that's the number one thing I want to see next episode is we finally have the two of them back in the room. We finally have gotten back to this point that we've really kind of ignored since episode three of the show. And so we're finally back to the original conflict when this, when episode one started. I mean, it's hard to even think back to episode one because that was 14 weeks ago but yeah but it's this is the set like this was the conflict that was set up in the original trailers that was set up in 
in the first episode, first two episodes, and we're we're finally back there. So I think above all, I'd like to see that happen. And then we'll deal with all the other subplots, I think, over time throughout the rest of the show, because this is I mean the stormtroopers and the cloning and how it connects to Mandalorian and all this stuff is, is bigger than than one season, you know, can give it. So I think it deserves oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. more time and more explanation. And I I want like Nala say to stick around for a long time. I want these characters to be around and and be a part of this foundational history of of the Empire. Because this is really as I as I said a couple weeks ago, this was not a story I think thought I wanted the origins really of the empire because i feel like we've gotten so much empire stuff early empire stuff throughout star wars canon but the way they're setting it up now and the way it's tying up into everything it's something that maybe i don't really care slightly as much about the imperial side but i really care about the clones and i want to see what happens with the clones and i want the show to be clone centered hey. i think at the heart of that right now the two ideologies between hunter and, and uh crosshair is what the show is about when it comes to the clones so i really want it to end that way with with the clones either being able to figure out a way to come together again or basically being on opposite sides of a civil war within the rise of the empire and maybe the eventual spark for the rebellion Thanks so much for watching this segment of the Star Wars Lads podcast. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video by clicking the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to our channel for new Star Wars content every single week. If you want to watch our full discussion, click the video on the left. Or if you want to check out one of our other awesome videos, click the video on the right.